Hey, it's Tony Bruschi. This Thanksgiving weekend, we're taking a look back at some of the most compelling cases and conversations that we've had in the last year. Here's another one of those conversations. Finding justice is an interesting thing, and the roads that one must go down to get there certainly has been for the parents of Ellen Greenberg trying to figure out who murdered their daughter when authorities want to say, what well, was a suicide, despite her being stabbed 20 times, half of them in the back and the head, and no investigation ever taking place. We have a weapon now in Philadelphia evidence lockers that's never been fingerprinted. We have digital devices that have never been examined. We have writings, journals, things of that nature from Ellen, all just sitting there because there never was a homicide investigation. But there is now a civil case against Philadelphia police for their lack of doing anything uh, in this and what seems to be uh, a cover-up of some sort. At least that's what would be the assumption I think most of us would make uh, on something like this. Joining me to discuss, Nima Romani, former federal prosecutor. Nima, this is such a, a crazy and twisted case, but discovery can bring a lot of things out. And if we can't get it in the criminal case, can we get it in a civil case? And could what comes out in that actually lead to a legitimate investigation criminally if they find some you know, prints or something? <laughs> Maybe we're talking square one here they they have done nothing yet it, it, will this in fact maybe lead somewhere if they do find anything i don't think so tony and nope. again i mean uh, i agree with you and i think the appellate judges do that this was not a good investigation likely a homicide but you know we're dealing with with two separate issues and generally speaking law enforcement prosecutors they have immunity in these types of cases no one is standing to compel law enforcement to do their job to have prosecutors file a murder case and again it's obviously you know here's someone parents who lost their daughter and likely their daughter was killed i agree with you you know people don't stab themselves in the heart and multiple times especially after their heart stops beating just look like so, dead yeah you know <laughs> yeah so i'm not disagreeing with you and again the, the judges also agreed but now, we're talking about a bigger issue. And imagine that people can sue prosecutors, police officers for not doing their job. Now, there's certain instances where there is a duty to act. So, instance, uh, officers have a duty to provide medical aid. We saw that in the George Floyd case. But, I mean, think of all, I mean, look, I, I live in Los Angeles and I work in Los Angeles. And there's a lot of crimes that don't go solved. Yeah. And, you know, and I respect law enforcement. I was a prosecutor, but sometimes police officers and sheriffs, and federal agents, they don't do their job, but they can't be sued for that by members of the public. So it, it's a bigger public policy issue. So I think even though they're going to take this up to the Supreme Court over mm -hmm. there, I think it will likely be affirmed. And this is just something that, frankly, is not actionable, even though it might be not right and it might be unfair. How is that, though? I mean, it, it just it doesn't seem to, to make a lot of sense to, to the layman out here that there wouldn't be some way. And I'm not even talking about pressing charges against the authorities, and though that is involved in the civil case, more so just opening this up as an investigation. The fact that there is a lot of evidence that's never been looked at that could very easily lead to some paths of who killed Ellen Greenberg. But... They, there's just this refusal to even acknowledge that, yeah, this should be an open investigation. We should be looking at this. We didn't in the past. Why Why do we have that? Is What is the way to change that where there can be an open investigation into this? Is that just simply a change of staff, a change of who's in charge and calling those shots of what's going to be investigated or not? Oh, absolutely. I mean, every prosecutor in this country is either elected or appointed by someone who is. So obviously a new prosecutor comes, they can take a very different view of things, right? I mean, we're talking about, you know, obviously Pennsylvania, Bill Cosby. You know, Bill Cosby wasn't prosecuted for years. Uh, there's a new prosecutor that's elected, and they have a very different view, and he is prosecuted. Ultimately, that case was dismissed after he was convicted. But, I mean, things can change. But what I'm trying to say is members of the public, they can't compel the executive to do something. Hey, look, uh, let's, let's talk about something right now. I mean, there's a lot of Republicans that want Hunter Biden prosecuted, right? And there's members of Congress that are trying to pressure, you know, uh, David Weiss, the, the attorney general there, 
you know, there's judges sometimes that want to get involved. Ultimately, prosecutorial decisions, they're made by prosecutors, and that's an executive function. Members of the public, members of the legislature, and even members of the judiciary, they can't do anything about it. They can't compel it, even though there's many times they want a prosecution to happen. I mean, there's obviously a lot of public pressure on this one. I think anybody who ever looks at this case is like, yeah, why are they not doing anything? But short of that, there is no way to compel this to go forward, is there, unless you have basically a change of the guard at some point? Uh, That's really it. You know, as far as filing a lawsuit, just not going to do anything. You know, you got to vote the prosecutor out of office. That's how change is affected in these types of cases. Civil lawsuits just aren't going to work. What uh, when they because they are requesting this material from Philadelphia PD out of the evidence locker to take a look at in discovery. Is there any uh, grounds that they could say, no, we're not giving that to you? Well, again, if the judge is going to dismiss the case and say, you know, standing to access those investigative materials, then, you know, even though it's the parents, you know, frankly, unless it's subject to some sort of a FOIA, Freedom of Information or Public Records Act, mm-hmm. you know, it's generally not going to be subject to subpoena power if there's no viable claim to go forward. But with a FOIA request, that would uh, involve an active investigation that's going on, though, as well. If they're not active, do they simply just have to say <laughs> the words, this is an active investigation for it to be an active investigation without it really being uh, an active uh, investigation to block the FOIA? Yeah, unfortunately, you know, and, and I've been critical of the overuse of active investigation mm-hmm. of block le- legitimate public requests. And, you know, I'm more on the media side and I think there should be greater access to government records. But you know, I agree with you, Tony, there's many times where government agencies, law enforcement, they use active investigation, which really it isn't really genuine there. It's an overused word. It's almost what was the one in the 90s where everyone's like doing like the what's up or something. Uh, I think <laughs> active investigation is a new version of that for, for police. Yeah.